Good morning to all of you. Welcome to uh, Jerusalem again, Brian. We have uh, serious issues to discuss. They're so serious that uh, they cannot even wait for uh, COVID-19. And I appreciate your making the visit to uh, Israel today. You've been the point man for uh, President Trump's campaign of maximum pressure on Iran. This campaign is uh, based on one simple principle. If Iran wants to be treated like a normal country, it should behave like a normal country. But it doesn't. Uh, it uh, deliberately deceives the international community. It lies all the time. Uh, it lies on solemn pledges and commitments that it took before the international community. It continues its secret program to develop nuclear weapons. It continues its secret program to deliver, to develop the means to deliver nuclear weapons. Uh, Iran uh, denies access to the IAEA inspectors to important sites, some of which we have uncovered through our own activity. It continues its rampant aggression across the Middle East and beyond. It arms, trains, finances, and dispatches terrorists. Iran is doing all that, and most of the international community is doing nothing in the face of it. And worse than nothing, many countries collude in this aggression. So I want to thank President Trump and express our appreciation to what he and your administration is doing. Uh, Iran tried to intimidate the United States from taking action against Iranian aggression. Uh, it wanted to apply sufficient pressures so that the United States would back off from this campaign of maximum pressure. Uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, led by the arch-terrorist Qasem Soleimani, launched a proxy war against the United States forces and allies in the region, and I can say the plan failed. It failed because the United States refused to be intimidated, and in fact, you took important and courageous decisions to take out Soleimani. And by removing that arch-terrorist, you drew a clear line in the sand, a sand that, a line that was etched in deeds, not in words only. And, and I think those deeds speak loudly um, all the time and to everyone in this region. Now, without the determination to use military force against uh, those who plan to attack you, the danger simply grows greater and greater. Uh, this is a policy, Brian, that we have adopted as well. We are absolutely uh, resolved to prevent Iran from entrenching itself militarily in our immediate vicinity. We take repeated and forceful military action against Iran and its proxies in Syria and elsewhere as necessary. And I say to the Ayatollahs in Tehran, Israel will continue to take these actions necessary to prevent you from creating another terror and military front against Israel and Syria. And I say to uh, Bashar al-Assad, you are risking the future of your country and your regime Israel will not allow Iran to establish a military presence in Syria. Brian, in response to uh, your, the repeated Iranian provocations and violations, uh, you have taken important actions, and I believe it is time to implement now snapback sanctions. I don't think we can afford to wait. We should not wait for Iran to start its uh, breakout to a nuclear weapon because when that happens, it will be too late for sanctions. So my position remains clear. We will do whatever is necessary to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. I know that's your position as well. This is part of the great partnership and alliance between both our countries. And again, I want to thank you for your friendship, for your resistance to aggression, and for your sponsorship of our alliance. Thank you.
Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Um, we see eye to eye on the dangers of letting the arms embargo expire on Iran. Uh, because of the failed Iran nuclear deal, in four short months, Iran will be able to freely import fighter jets, attack helicopters, warships, submarines, large caliber artillery systems, uh, and missiles of certain ranges. Iran will then be in a position to export these weapons and their technologies to their proxies, such as Hezbollah, Palestine Islamic Jihad, Hamas, uh, Shia militia groups in Iraq and Syria, uh, militant networks in Bahrain, uh, and to the Houthis in Yemen. And never forget, uh, it goes beyond the Middle East. Iran has conducted terrorist operations across five continents, including in Argentina. And so um, the last thing that this region needs is more Iranian weapons. And when we look at the dangers of letting the arms embargo expire, this is a threat to Israel's security because no country sponsors more terrorism and anti-Semitism in the world than the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, but it is not only a danger to Israel's security. It is a danger to uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain. And I have visited these uh, countries on my trip to the Middle East. And they are saying the same thing in a very loud and clear voice to the UN Security Council, that the 13-year arms embargo on Iran must be continued. It cannot expire. And I challenge any country to make the national security argument for letting the arms embargo expire. And so the United States and Israel, working together, uh, as we have for many decades, will ensure that one way or another, the arms embargo will not expire and it will be extended. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Right. Thank you, sir. Again, I was uh, so swept away by the strength of our friendship that I grasped your hand. <laughs> so now uh, uh, we both uh, we'll both do this. We'll do this because we're committed to the Corona regime and to our friendship. Yeah. And therefore, this is another elbow shake. All right. <laughs> That's it. That's as far as we go. Thank you. Thank you. Please sit down. Thank you.